Hello everyone. In this session, I am going to discuss thalassemia. It's a very important topic from exam point of view. So let's start thalassemia. So in this session, basically, I am going to discuss the thalassemia under following headings. First, I will let you know the introduction. Then I will let you know the classification. In the classification, I will be discussing two types of thalassemia, the beta thalassemia and the alpha thalassemia. I will be telling you the definition of both of them, the molecular pathogenesis, the exact mutation in both of them, the various types of both of them, 3-3 three, three types in both of them, clinical features and the lab diagnosis. Lab diagnosis I will be discussing basically of beta thalassemia which is important from exam point of view. So we will be discussing thalassemia completely like this. Let's start it. So what is thalassemia? For understanding thalassemia, you have to understand the hemoglobins because thalassemia is a type of quantitative hemoglobinopathy. You know, humans have three types of hemoglobin in their blood. What are the three types of hemoglobin human have? The human have adult hemoglobin, that is hemoglobin A, that is the major hemoglobin. Hemoglobin F is the fetal hemoglobin and hemoglobin A2 is the minor hemoglobin. You can see the percentage. Hemoglobin A is 95 to 98%, hemoglobin F is nearly 1% and hemoglobin A2 is less than 3.5%, right? Hemoglobin A is 2 alpha chain, 2 beta chain, you can see 2 alpha, 2 beta, okay? Hemoglobin F is 2 alpha chain and 2 gamma chain, it's 2 alpha and 2 gamma. And hemoglobin A2 is 2 alpha chain and 2 delta chain, 2, you can see 2. So that is the formula. So basically there are 4 globin chain in all of them. All the hemoglobin have 4 heme and 4 globin. Currently, I am not concerned with heme because thalassemia is a disorder of globin. You know, it is a globinopathy. So there are four globin chains in all of them. You can see the formulas 2 alpha, 2 beta in hemoglobin A, 2 alpha and 2 gamma in hemoglobin F and 2 alpha and 2 delta in hemoglobin A2. So four globin chains are there. Now there can be two problems with the globin. Either the globin, there is some problem in the structure of any of the globin chain. That is known as structural abnormality, known as qualitative abnormality. The quality is not good. Or else, the quality is good, but the amount is not normal. That is known as quantitative abnormality. So, globinopathy, there can be two problems in the globin chains. The qualitative, the quantitative. Qualitative means structure is not normal. There is some problem in the structure, structural abnormality. And in the quantitative, the amount is less. The amount is not normal. So, basically... The two types of disorders, the hemoglobinopathies or specifically globinopathies are qualitative and quantitative. The qualitative one, the example is sickle cell anemia. In sickle cell anemia, the beta chain, there is a mutation in the beta chain gene. So the beta chain which is formed is abnormal structure. So it's a qualitative abnormality. But currently I'm teaching you thalassemias. In the thalassemia, the structure is absolutely normal, but the amount is less. You know, structure is absolutely normal. But the amount is less, the quantity is not good. You know, I mean the quantity is less. So it is, sometimes it is zero also. So it is the quantitative abnormality. So can I say what is thalassemia? Thalassemia is the quantitative abnormality of globin. It is a quantitative hemoglobinopathy. There is a separate video on sickle cell anemia. You must watch that video along with this video to understand the qualitative and quantitative both hemoglobinopathies together in one stretch. So I request the students to watch that video also coming on thalassemia. So what is thalassemia? What we have learned? It is the quantitative abnormality of the globin chain. So be, the globin chain are normal in structure, but their synthesis is less. And sometimes it may be zero. Sometimes it is reduced, sometimes it may be zero, right? So there are two type of uh, globin chain in hemoglobin A. Na? In hemoglobin A, we have two alpha, two beta. So there are two type of thalassemia. If alpha is less or absent, it's alpha thalassemia. And if beta is less or absent, it is beta thalassemia. So in alpha thalassemia, there is reduced synthesis or total absence of alpha chain. And in beta thalassemia, there is reduced synthesis or total absence of beta chain. Now, where are the chromosomes are located? For alpha chain, the chromosome, uh, the gene for the alpha chain is located on chromosome number 16. And the gene for beta chain is located on chromosome number 11, right? So you can see the 2 alpha, the 2 beta. Now you can see if alpha is absent or reduced, so beta will be uh, there. It will be, you know, the beta will be relatively more than alpha. So it is known as alpha thalassemia or if the beta is less or reduced. So alpha will be relatively more. It is known as beta thalassemia, right? So let me tell you the classification of alpha thalemia, thalassemias. The alpha thalassemias are of four type. You know, hydrophytalis, hemoglobin H, alpha thalassemia trait, alpha thalassemia carrier. We'll be, we will be discussing all of them in detail one by one when I teach you alpha thalassemia. And see the classification of beta thalassemia. Beta thalassemia are of three type. 
major, intermediate and minor. So learn the four types of alpha and learn the three types of beta. We will see the details of all of them one by one. Let's start beta thalassemia in detail first. First, I will teach you beta in detail, the types of the beta, the pathogenesis of the beta. Then I will come on alpha and teach you alpha in detail. So let's start with beta thalassemia and beta thalassemia. I told you the problem is, is with the beta chain of the globin. The beta chain is either less or total zero. That is known as beta thalassemia. So the beta chain, imagine the beta is absent. Either it is reduced or absent, right? So hemoglobin A cannot form because for the formation of hemoglobin, we require two alpha, two beta. Now alpha is there, but beta is not there. So how hemoglobin A will be formed? So hemoglobin A will not form. That is the problem with beta thalassemia. That is the introduction, the definition. Now what is the molecular pathogenesis? Tell me the exact mutation which is taking place because of which this beta chain is not forming, right? So the gene for beta chain is located on chromosome number 11. On chromosome number 11, there can be point mutations. There can be splicing mutation, there can be termination mutation, there can be promoter mutation. Any of them, all of them are point mutation. Most common is the splicing one that leads to reduced synthesis or zero synthesis of beta chain. So you can see this is a human cell. This is the nucleus of the human cell. It contains 46 chromosome. I can say 23 pairs of chromosome. In the 23 pair, this is pair number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Likewise, so I am interested in pair number 11. In the pair number 11, I am interested in the gene of the beta, beta chain gene. That gene is having some point mutation. One of the point mutation, whether splicing, whether promoter or whether chain terminator. That is causing reduced or absent synthesis of beta chain. That's it. So you can learn the molecular pathogenesis. It's point mutation, right? Now, there are three types of beta, the major, intermediate and minor. Okay. In major, in major, there is complete absence. You know, the complete absence of hemoglobin A. You know, complete absence of beta chain. So hemoglobin A is nearly zero, zero. So maximum hemoglobin is hemoglobin F. The hemoglobin F. What is hemoglobin F? Alpha 2, gamma 2. I'm saying beta is absent now. Alpha is normal, but normally alpha bind with beta and it forms hemoglobin A. It forms hemoglobin A like this. But I am saying now beta is absent. So with whom the alpha will bind? Alpha will bind with gamma and because of which hemoglobin F will be formed. So hemoglobin A is absent or reduced and hemoglobin F normally less than 1%. Now it will be more. It will be more. It can be as high as 98% here in, in major. In beta thalassemia major, right? So the two genes are there, both are mutated. So on chromosome number 11, we have a pair of chromosome number 11. On each chromosome, we have one, one gene of the beta. One gene here, one gene here. So I'm telling you there is point mutation in them. That is leading to beta thalassemia. So both the genes are mutated. This one also, this one also. So the trait is beta thel, beta thel. The two genes present on chromosome number 11, both are mutated. So there is zero beta, beta chain or very less beta chain. So alpha will bind with gamma leading to formation of hemoglobin F. It is severe anemia requiring very frequent blood transfusion since, since birth. So very frequent every, every week or twice a week or every 15 days blood transfusion is required depending on the percentage of hemoglobin A which can be synthesized and lesser the percentage of hemoglobin A more frequent is the blood transfusion required. The second is the the intermedia. In the intermedia, multiple mechanisms can be there. It's intermediate. Here, anemia is severe, but blood transfusion is not required very frequently, as frequent as in major. It is between the two. And minor, minor are usually asymptomatic. Here, one gene is normal, one is mutated. Right. So, A2, A2 is 4 to 9 percent and hemoglobin F is 1 to 5 percent and major hemoglobin is still hemoglobin A. So, they are usually asymptomatic. That is the three types of beta thalassemia you have seen. Now, coming on the clinical features of beta thalassemia, major. I am discussing only for major because intermediate and minor usually don't have much symptoms. Minor is absolutely asymptomatic and intermediate have anemia, that's it. But major, you have to understand the uh, clinical features. Now, I am saying beta is absent. So, what does the alpha will do? Alpha will form complex with gamma, right? Alpha 2, gamma 2 because beta is absent. Normally, alpha bind with beta and form hemoglobin A. But since beta is absent, alpha will bind with gamma and form the hemoglobin F number 1. Number 2, the RBC containing only alpha, only alpha, such RBCs are destroyed. Such RBCs are destroyed. Ineffective erythropoiesis takes place leading to anemia. Because of the anemia, the EPO, erythropoiet erythropoietin in the renal tissue will be more, right? So there will be more RN absorption. 
एंड बिकॉज ऑफ द फ्रीक्वेंट ब्लड ट्रांसफ्यूजन यू विल गिव फ्रीक्वेंट ब्लड ट्रांसफ्यूजन टू दिस पर्सन ना आई एम सींग द ब्लड ट्रांसफ्यूजन इज वेरी फ्रीक्वेंट इन द ब्लड ट्रांसफ्यूजन वेन एवर दर इज अ फ्रीक्वेंट ब्लड ट्रांसफ्यूजन द मोस्ट मेन प्रॉब्लम हियर हियर इज द आयरन ओवरलोड so because iron is also going every blood transfusion now you cannot give only globin along with globin you will give heme also but patient do not require heme patient require only globin patient is not requiring heme but heme uh, alone you cannot give the globin na you will give complete hemoglobin in the rbc in blood transfusion so the heme will accumulate in the form of the iron and such patient which require very frequently uh, blood transfusion they have iron overload and that is the cause of the death you know the iron overload will deposit in various organs the heart the pancreas the kidney causing the failure of these organs and leading to the death right and to compensate the bone marrow cavity the medullary cavity you know the marrow cavity will expand so that is the clinical features so patient have anemia patient have hepatomegaly splenomegaly for extra medullary hematopoiesis to compensate the bone marrow will expand so they typically have thalassemic faces so you can see the maxillary bone or the facial bone it is expanding why it is expanding to compensate to form more and more rbcs because they are losing they are lost right so and iron overload can be there because of repeated blood transfusion every time heme is also coming we do not require heme heme is converting into iron and damaging the liver and heart causing the death right so that can be the problems or the clinical features now coming on lab diagnosis of beta thalassemia major how you will do the lab diagnosis you can make a peripheral smear in the peripheral smear you will get microcytic hypochromic anemia you can understand what is microcytic hypochromic anemia you can compare the size of the rbcs with the lymphocyte rbcs are smaller number 1 and they have less color they, the the central pilar is uh, expanded and hardly you see the hemoglobin at the periphery so microcytic hypochromic rbcs there is variation in shape of rbc variation variation in size of rbc so anisocytosis poikilocytosis some of them are target cells right target cells are seen and basophilic stippling is also common basophilic stippling is also common in thalassemia right so that is the peripheral blood picture you can see in thalassemia major in the bone marrow i am saying it's hypercellular because of compensation the me ratio is reversed myeloid is less erythroid is more right myeloid is less erythroid is more the next is the osmotic fragility test it's very important to understand here the osmotic fragility is decreased you know they become more stable here the rbcs become normal rbc contain alpha 2 beta 2 they are fragile at certain extent but the rbc which don't have beta they have alpha 2 gamma 2 they are more stable so basically the fragility is decreased the they are, they are not fragile the fragility is decreased right so if you see the osmotic fragility this is the normal range let me show you the normal range you can see between these two lines just a second okay between these two lines it's normal range it's normal range so osmotic fragility is uh, increased in hereditary spherocytosis but it is decreased here in thalassemia right now there is a special test which is known as nestroff test first learn the full form what is nestroff test it is naked eye single tube naked eye single tube red cell osmotic fragility test so naked eye single tube nestroff red cell osmotic fragility test red cell osmotic fragility test so that is the full form of nestroff that is typically performed as in thalassemia it is a screening test of thalassemia please learn learn the full form naked eye we will see with naked eye we do not use the microscope in a single test tube we perform single test tube red cell osmotic fragility test we are testing that's why that is the nestroff test so what basically we are supposed to do take two test tube can you see the two test tubes in front of you uh, you can take the blood of the thalassemic patient in one of them and you can take the blood of the control control is healthy individual not anemic in one of them right now you can see in the two test tube you are taking one normal person blood as a control and one thalassemic curve blood. in both of them you are adding 0.35% saline in both of them you are adding 0.35% saline so at 35% saline the control will undergo hemolysis the control the healthy individual the rbc present inside that let me draw the rbc they all will undergo hemolysis they all will undergo hemolysis but thalassemia rbc will not undergo hemolysis because in thalassemia the osmotic fragility is reduced so at 35% of saline they will not fragile right now behind the test tube put a blank white paper can you see the paper behind it put a blank white paper behind the test tube and uh, uh, ma make the black lines on that black lines so if you see from the front in control you can see the black line because the rbcs are 
ruptured but in thalassemic you cannot read you cannot read behind that you can put a newspaper behind that you can put a paper with black lines so basically i mean to say this is a paper and these are the black lines i will draw the black lines these are the two test tubes you can see right in which the blood is filled so i am saying in control in control i can see the black uh, uh, background black lines this is control okay but in thalassemia i cannot see the background black lines let me draw the black lines to explain you so here i can see here i can see in control i can see because rbcs are already ruptured here the rbcs are ruptured so i can read the black lines but here rbcs are intact intact so i cannot see through and through i cannot see so that is known as nestroff test right so you take two test tube put 0.35% saline in them wait for 30 minutes after that put a white paper with a black line on that the rbc in control they undergo hemolysis so the black line is visible but the rbc in thalassemia they are resistant to 0.35% saline they will not undergo hemolysis so black line is not clearly visible it's a spotter the name of the test is nestroff test learn the full form learn the principle learn the procedure learn the interpretation so that is nestroff test coming on hemoglobin electrophoresis in electrophoresis you will get maximum hemoglobin is hemoglobin a2 and hemoglobin f hemoglobin a is either completely absent or very less so that is hemoglobin electrophoresis you can see the x ray of the skull in which you are getting typical cox cork uh, crew cut appearance or hair on end appearance so both the meaning of both are same it is due to expansion of the marrow cavity in the skull the marrow cavity get expanded giving this appearance this is known as crew cut appearance or hair on and appearance so that is all about beta thalassemia coming quickly on alpha thalassemia under the parallel headings what is alpha thalassemia now beta is normal alpha is absent either it is absent or reduced so again hemoglobin a cannot be formed because for formation of hemoglobin a we require 2 alpha 2 beta in beta thalassemia the beta was absent in alpha thalassemia the alpha is absent either alpha is absent or reduced protection the molecular pathogenesis there is deletion of one or more alpha genes present on chromosome number 16 so i told you the human cell the nucleus of the human cell it contain 46 chromosome or 23 pair of chromosome among the 23 pair pair number 1 2 3 4 5 i am interested in pair number 16 so let's draw pair number 16 on a different page this is pair number 16 please understand there are four genes for alpha you know two on each chromosome so all healthy individuals have four alpha genes two on each chromosome of chromosome number 16 right so total four genes now there are four types of um, alpha thalassemia if one gene is deleted it is known as trait alpha thalassemia trait if two are deleted it is known as carrier alpha thalassemia carrier if three are deleted it is known as hbh disease and if all four are deleted it is known as hydrop fetalis so i hope you got it right i hope you got it so that is the classification so you can understand the classification you learn its deletion it's not point mutation so let me draw chromosome number 11 this is a pair of chromosome number 11 and this is a chromosome number 16 pair chromosome number 11 have beta thalassemia gene only two genes are present for beta this is beta this is beta but alpha is present on chromosome number 16 and four genes are present two on each chromosome so please understand the basics the difference you can see now what i mean to say here here is the point mutation point mutation leading to beta thalassemia and here is the deletion deletion of them leading to alpha deletion of one deletion of two deletion of three deletion of four so four types four types of alpha thalassemia that is the basic the basic is that point mutation on chromosome 11 the beta gene leading to beta thalassemia and deletion on chromosome number 16 the alpha gene leading to alpha thalassemia so beta thalassemia is due to point mutation alpha thalassemia is due to deletion can i go ahead so that is a molecular pathogenesis the four types i already taught you so if one of them is deleted one gene is deleted it is known as alpha thalassemia carrier it's known as carrier and it's asymptomatic if two of them are deleted two of them are deleted it's known as trait again mild anemia hardly any anemia hardly any symptoms although asymptomatic now but 3 and 4 are deleted it's problematic if 3 is deleted it is known as hemoglobin h disease and if 4 is deleted it's known as hemoglobin uh, hydrop fetalis so let me tell you what will happen if 3 are deleted and 4 are deleted so if one is deleted carrier asymptomatic two are deleted it's trait again asymptomatic or mild here it's asymptomatic here it's mild anemia but 3 and 4 is the problematic so let me show you 3 and 4 if 3 are deleted what will happen if 4 are deleted what will happen so if 3 are deleted the alpha is almost absent na so beta beta will form the tetramer 
because alpha is absent. So what the beta will do? Beta will form normally two alpha, two beta, but now alpha is absent. Three of them are deleted, right? So alpha is absent. So beta will form tetramer. It is known as hemoglobin H. It is an abnormal hemoglobin known as hemoglobin H. Hemoglobin H have high affinity for oxygen. It will trap the oxygen and will not leave the oxygen leading to hemolytic anemias. It will be trapped in the screen. That is hemoglobin H, right? And if, uh, if alpha is absent, gamma is forming the tetramer. It is known as Bart hemoglobin. So please understand here the tetramer is of beta, here the tetramer is of gamma because the alpha is absent. Now please understand the alpha is absent. So either the beta will form tetramer or the gamma will form tetramer. If beta form tetramer, it's hemoglobin H. And if gamma form tetramer, it's hemoglobin Bart. Hemoglobin Bart, here also the oxygen affinity is high and it will lead to intrauterine death. It is known as hydrop fetalis. The fetus is still birth or intrauterine death of the fetus that is hydrop fetalis. So the two different, here three genes are deleted and here all four are deleted. The most severe is this one and second number severe is this one. You got it? So hemoglobin H, it is moderately severe anemia, require occasional blood transfusion, but hydrop fetalis is most dangerous. Here three genes are deleted and here all four genes are deleted, right? It is the most dangerous form. Here Bart hemoglobin is formed and here it leads to intrauterine death. So in hemoglobin H disease, hemoglobin H is formed. That is the tetramer of beta. And in hemoglobin fetalis, uh, hemoglobin Bart is formed. Hemoglobin Bart is formed. That is a tetramer of gamma. You got it? So alpha thalassemia, let me summarize. There are four types of alpha thalassemia. What are the four types? Depending, there are four genes of alpha. Two on each chromosome number 16. If one is deleted, if two is deleted, if three is deleted of, or if all four are deleted, the most severe form. If one is deleted, it is known as carrier. It's asymptomatic. Okay. If two are deleted, it's known as trait. It's mild anemia, hardly require any transfusion. If three are deleted, it is known as hemoglobin H. The name of the disease is hemoglobin H in which hemoglobin H is formed. And hemoglobin H is a tetramer of beta. And if four are deleted, it is the most severe. Here, hemoglobin Bart is formed. The hemoglobin Bart, the hemoglobin Bart, the name of the disease is hydrop fetalis, in which hemoglobin Bart is formed and it is a gamma tetramer. So see the name of the disease, see the name of the hemoglobin. So I mean to say the name of the disease is hemoglobin H and hydrop fetalis. And the name of the hemoglobin in which it is formed is hemoglobin H and Bart. This is beta tetramer, this is gamma tetramer. So please learn that we are done with thalassemia. Let's solve some MCQs on that. So there is a six year old boy belonging to Punjabi family. Now in Punjabis, the thalassemias, the Punjabis, Sindhis, Gujaratis, it's very common, you know. So Punjabi family is giving you a clue. It can be thalassemia. There is a past history of blood transfusion, which is, and the hemoglobin is 3.5. See, hemoglobin, normal hemoglobin, you know, for male, female, it's a six year old child. So something which is hereditary. You know, it's congenital, it's hereditary and belonging to Punjabi family and hemoglobin is 3.5 and history of blood transfusion, right? And you can see microcytic hypochromic anemia, target cells, reduced osmotic fragility. All of them are giving you a clue. What is the correct answer? Is it alpha thalassemia, beta thalassemia, sickle cell anemia or G6PD deficiency anemia? Can you please try? Many clues are given to you. I hope you all are right. The correct answer is the beta. You got the clue. So it is hereditary and it is severe. It is very severe. You know, if it was alpha, it was not severe in alpha. All four genes deleted, it should be hydrop fetalis that should be stillborn. But here the child is six years now. So it's not alpha, it's beta. And in beta, it's beta major because of the history of blood transfusion. So coming on the next question, which of the following is the cause of alpha thalassemia? Deletion of alpha gene, deletion of beta gene, access of alpha gene or single amino acid substitution in alpha chain? What is the correct answer of alpha thalassemia? Can you please try? I told you there are four genes on chromosome 16. What is the correct answer? You all are right. The correct answer is deletion of alpha here. Okay, the next question is in front of you. True about beta thalassemia. What is true about beta thalassemia? Increased hemoglobin F, is it true? Increased hemoglobin A2, microcytosis, severe anemia or target cell. For beta thalassemia trait, they are asking. Trait means only uh, two of them are deleted. The trait, oh, I'm sorry, not delete. There is no deletion in beta thalassemia. The trait is usually minor. The, we will call minor as the trait. The minor is the, so beta thalassemia minor, what you can see. Now, can you try? The question is easy. I have given you a clue also. 
I hope you all are right. The correct answer is increase hemoglobin F. That's all about thalassemia. I hope you learned the topic well. Wishing you all the best. Hello everyone. I hope you understood this topic with crystal clear concepts. Now, if you want the notes of this topic and all my YouTube session notes, then you can click on the link which is pinned in the comment box. Thank you so much for your kind attention, for your patience, for your valuable time. Now here a QR code is provided to you. You can scan it if you wish and via scanning it, you can connect with me on various social media platforms like uh, Instagram, Telegram, WhatsApp, where I share educational content which will be very useful for you so if you wish you can take the snapshot or you can scan it directly and here is the contact number provided to you you can save this contact number it's 9833032948 this is for whatsapp uh, support chat support it is not for calling so if you have any doubt in the topic which i'm teaching you in this session and if you have any doubt in other topics also in pathology pharmacology microbiology psm medicine you can text your query here and if you have any topic in your mind and you want me to take that topic to schedule that topic in YouTube, so you can also text that topic here. So if many students are demanding the same topic, we will schedule it soon. So thank you so much. Wishing you all the best. Bye-bye.